Hi, this is David Hunt from Live for, from Live for Truth and from FVRlive.com, The Ferret. And I'm with Mark Sargent here at the 2019 Conference Truth Quest. And so I just want to say it's, it's an honor to be able to, uh, oh. to have a, a bit of time to talk to you. Oh, yeah, happy to do thank it. Thank you. And, uh, and, and, and hey, say, I'm going to say hi to everybody uh, at Flat Earth Radio. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Flat Earth Radio. Yeah. And Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Yeah, so um, we'll, be actually, we'll be recording this and then actually I'll, I'll put it after, so we're not okay. live yet because we don't Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, cool. Uh, yeah, so um, anyway, so from last time when I saw you at the conference in California, you right. been, you've gone to the New Zealand conference? Right. So uh, New Zealand, it was the second stop on our Flat Earth tour this year because we are going to a lot of the conferences. So I spent two weeks out of New Zealand, uh, Adrian. Did the, the conference down there and it went really really well we had to bring in extra chairs at the end uh, a lot of drop-ins you know a lot of people that it, that kind of didn't surprise me there's a lot of people that want to remain anonymous as possible it's like i'm not registering i'm just going to show up this is show up. which was fun and the media was quite friendly it was, it was really cool we had three different television stations show up and spend all day with us and then radio interviews i actually got to do not only did i do some phone radio interviews but i got to go downtown Auckland go to a studio down there and shoot uh, with a radio station in-house, that was fun. And then independent journalists were, were shooting this all day. So I did, I think, nine interviews in two days, which was which was fun. And they were long interviews, longer than stuff. The Canadian uh, media don't stand, don't stay too long. Yeah, like when we did the Edmonton conference, they only, they were like, they, they were made it very clear that they want to be out by lunch. Oh, okay. It's like, we're going to shoot as much as we can, but no, lunch, we're out of here. And then, like maybe a couple stragglers stayed around, but they weren't Canadian media. Okay. Anyway, so. Yeah. Well, it sounded like it was a good turnout. I mean, yeah, yeah, was, it was. Oh, that's, it, that's good. It was. Yeah, we we you know it was New Zealand. It was the first time. Remember, there's only four million people in the entire country. Right. Right. So uh, but, but it was a lot of fun, and the Canadian conference here uh, in Calgary looks like it's going to be a good turnout. And it sounded like they sold 105 tickets, I think. Mean, yeah, without drop-ins yet, which was kind oh, of neat. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah, so tomorrow morning, I'm expecting to see people that, that's usually what happens. People right. that, like, I'm not going to show up tonight, but they're going to show up tomorrow and, and uh, you know, register the same day, because, you know, it doesn't sell out yeah. or anything like that. And then after this conference, uh, we have the summer off for documentaries and whatever else. And then in the fall, we're doing uh, one in UK. Um, one in Amsterdam, I'm going to be doing in Stockholm, Mount Shasta, California, and then ending up in Dallas, Texas. Okay. So, yeah, big, a lot. Yeah, I mean, so we just keep bouncing around. And some, again, I kind of joke about being on tour, but that's because we're running into the same people. Right. You know, right. Robbie's here, and Matt Long's yeah. here, and, and Jar Jared, and, yeah. and a bunch of other people. So. Yeah. And are you going to the uh, Take on the World conference that's happening in August as well? I have not been invited to oh, not been oh, okay. and that and that doesn't hurt me in any way. Right. Like, look, I mean, sometimes they don't invite you at the last minute, and if they do, great. If they don't, you know, I'll probably survive. Right, because that's not actually really a flat Earth conference. That's more the one that's on the biblical, um, the different biblical. Um, <coughs> Which is fine, kind of like Skyfall, oh, the, okay, right, the yeah. conference where it's it's primarily Christian based with Flat Earth integrated right, into right, it. Which right. is fine, I mean, I can talk chapter verse. I have no problem with doing that. Oh, okay. But there's guys out there that are way better than oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Rotsky, the Jet Z Garcia, and Robbie yeah. Evans, so, 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 so. Yeah, they have like 30, there's like 30 speakers, actually 30 plus, something like that. Yeah, they don't need me. So, <laughs> if, if, they, if they bring me in, great. But you're definitely welcome to come. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 if, I, if I find the time in July, unfortunately, I'm gonna be in Indiana helping uh, Rick Hummer, otherwise known as uh, Roland Reddy. Right. He's gonna be doing a special, he's gonna be film, filming some stuff down in Indiana and doing some special role and stuff at a parade and it's like, okay, he goes, he goes, I'm bringing you in. It's like, okay, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. If he ever finishes this project, I don't know, probably in there. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I was going to ask you some questions in regards to, um, you were in the documentary Behind the Curve, right? And right. how did that, how did that go? Like, um, were you expecting, you know, because there has been so many pros and cons with that documentary. Were you expecting the stuff that, that happened after like, with that documentary? Like, it, regardless of what like, the feedback you got? There? It was exactly what I thought it was going to be, which well, was yeah. they initially started out to be a human interest piece. They reached out to me in 2017 and they said, you know, do you think we could round up some flattered people and follow you guys for the better part of a year? 
And I said, sure, why not? Uh, Delta V Productions, they were a small group. I mean, truth be told, they, the chances of them even doing any sort of success with a documentary are slim. You have less than a 1% chance of making a documentary okay. and then getting it into anything. And so when they made it, for example, they, they finished shooting uh, at the end of 2017, they edited it in 2018, and they submitted it to film festivals. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the first film festival we went to was Toronto. And there were 3,000 films submit, submitted to Toronto, along, they, with, along with us, okay. and they only picked 100. And we were picked out of the 100, and out of those, we all, and this happened again and again and again, we did 27 film festivals in eight countries. And we were always, we never really won any awards. I mean, we won one award in Oregon. But uh, we were always voted as like, okay, the 10, the 10, top 10 documentaries you must see. Right. You know, and we were always in that list. And then, they were, you know, the guys were downplaying it, saying, well, it's never going to sell. Right. So we're never going to, you know, because even though you may make it into a documentary, you know, lots of people make it in, you know, 100 per festival, but almost nobody gets chosen by a studio to get picked up. And then almost immediately it was bought by Amazon and Google Play and iTunes and um, uh, YouTube Red. And then finally Netflix happened. Oh, oh, Netflix yeah, okay. happened at the at a few months later, just before Thanksgiving. Yeah. In fact, just before the conference, <laughs> yeah, 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 down, down, in, down in Denver, and that's when everything exploded. I had no idea that anyone under the age of thirty should I order it anyway? Hello. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, move back. no, 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 she was. Yeah. She was. So just for so just for the listeners that are tuning in, I'm just talking with Mark Sargent here about his um, um, the involvement as a documentary, the, uh, the behind the curve. And so, as you were saying, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, when, once Netflix bought it, uh, everything exploded because everybody under the under the age of thirty has Netflix. Period. Pretty much. Yes. They do. It's yeah, like exactly. their that's their go to media thing, and we immediately started trending on it because we skew younger anyway. Uh, yeah. the, the, the U.gov survey, the 18 to 24 year olds were already a third into, you know, a third of them were into Flat Earth. And then this, um, the 12 to 18, 17 year olds were yeah. also skewing. So we just we just took off from yeah. that point. And yeah. that's when all of a sudden this year we became, you know, now we're, we're touring. And yeah, so. touring, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I actually just bought into, like literally, I bought into Netflix to be able to actually watch the, the documentary. Oh, and you, so, so you finally saw it. So I got to see it a couple times, yeah. yeah. It, it, again, it and was, in my opinion, it was the Trojan horse that I was waiting for. Which oh, okay. was, meaning there was, I sat in audiences, live audiences, you know, when they yeah. saw it for the first time and nobody knew who I was. And the people that saw it in the audiences, they weren't, they were globalists. And after they were done, they were, they were not flat earthers, but they had a lot of questions. Right. And that's all we really cared about was like making mass questions. Yes, did they take shots at Jaron and Bob and me a little bit? Uh, yeah, and they, they, they took shots when they could. But the reason they did that was at the end of the documentary, you noticed uh, there was a 12 year old kid that came up to the microphone and said, started asking me questions. Well, that's when they took it so seriously. In fact, in the director's commentary on the iTunes version, that's when they, they, they admitted to it. They said that, look, once that 12 year old kid walked up, all bets were off. We had to take a stand against oh. this because it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. Right. And it's like, I'm going, well, that's fine. If you want to say you're doing it for the children, I guess, but I don't think that's very fair considering, you know, we, we're not targeting kids. Right. And so that's when they decided to go out for Jared and Bob, and, and that's why they ended it the way they did. But in, in a way, the way they did it, it worked out because it made the audience feel safe. In which was okay. The fighters was making mistakes in their experiments. They're obviously yeah. wrong, but there were also so many other questions that they needed answered, which they couldn't get. Yeah. So again, we we started trending again, and it's out there, and it's doing gangbusters. Yes, the flyer community hates it. I don't blame them. But the rest of the world is really intrigued by it. Okay, so that's what it, that's, that's I mean, you're asking lots of questions. Then. Ask tons of questions. I mean, okay. I had to do Q and A's at some of these things where I would go up on stage and. I, and I sat there, and, and most of the audience was still there. You know, yeah. lights, house lights were up, and I go, any questions? Hands. Hands everywhere. Because they had lots of nuts and bolts questions about the time. Right. So, so basically you're saying that, okay, like, I mean, even though some of the stuff, like, at the end, there was, like, kind of a flop, or, I mean, or like, that, like, that Oh, one, the Jared experiment? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was editing. That was okay. the power of editing. Oh, Jared, okay. but, but to be fair, yeah. Jared did not do his due diligence, meaning right. he hadn't even gone out to the site during the daytime to see if he had line of oh, okay. he just he, he was the, one of those guys, and Jaron knows this now, he made his mistake, which is never ever do an experiment live the first time on camera. You know, 
Yeah. He, and that's what he did. He walks out there. It's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, I don't know. How about everything? Your laser melted, the condenser beam cracked, and then you made, and then he had the audacity to call them back and say, and, and, and because you, what you didn't see was there were two different experiments, like two different months. Right. They flew back up because Jaron said, oh, I totally got it this time. And he still, he oh, still okay. didn't have it right. Okay. And only later, months later, did he go in and say, oh, yeah, I didn't even have line of sight, did I? It's like, oh, man, you're killing me. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what they used. I mean, they wanted that by the time the, the director, the producers of the film, got to the end of that movie, they hated the topic. Hated it. Didn't hate us. They hated the topic. And because we were part of it, they were going to take shots at us. Right, right. And, which was fine. Uh, again, it, it, it made the audience feel safe, and they asked a lot of questions, and it gave the media a chance to, because beforehand the media was just attacking the topic. But the media didn't have anything tangible to latch on to. Right. Now they do. Now it's like, now they don't have to go after Flat Earth as a topic. All they have to do is review a movie. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people yeah, did. Exactly. A lot of reviews came out about it. Okay. Which was fine. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, good. I mean, I mean, the fact like Newsweek took, made an article against Jared. Right, Newsweek. Oh, they, Newsweek. Yeah, they attacked Jaron because of the film. And, and as much as we're going, oh, people feeling bad for Jaron, I mean, most of the speakers would tell you, it's like, oh, I was jealous. Like, I wish Newsweek was coming after me. <laughs> right. So, and they did in some cases, but I, you know, it would have been nice to see Time Magazine. I had to settle for a National Geographic. Oh, good, yeah. So, yes. so, beauty is rising out of the ashes. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's so what I'm seeing. Beauty yeah, so is rising out of the ashes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Is that, I mean, if people are asking questions, that's what we want them to do. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It is. It has been a godsend. I mean, I called a Trojan horse for a reason. I and I wouldn't have believed it myself except I sat in the audiences where oh, I'll give you two stories real quick. Sorry. One was um, when the uh, when I was sitting in the audiences, the, like 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in, the audiences don't know the context of the film. They're just saying, oh, it's, it's flat earthers, right? But they don't know if it's how real it is. And they're watching it and they're going, uh, they're laughing at the jokes because they don't think it's real. And then at about the 30 minute mark, you can see them click and they're going, wait a minute, wait, these, this is act, these are people. This is actually a part of the internet, which I have no idea what it's about. I'll give you a quick story though. Uh, in Los Angeles, uh, there was an editor, so all the documentary teams know each other. And there was a doc, our, our editor showed another documentary team the movie without any context whatsoever. And he says, just watch this. And he watched the whole thing. He knew nothing about Flutter. At the end, he's going, man. So, what sort of budget did you have for this movie? So we talk about it. He says, the actors. Oh, so many actors. How did you get them to play it so straight? The guy literally thought that it was a, it was a piece of what's known as docking fiction, where everybody there plays it absolutely straight, but it's absolutely fiction. You know, like be, like I would be an actor just talking about flat earth, but I, you know, but I'm just an actor that goes home. And he goes, no man, it was real. And apparently the guy just flipped out. He's like, Whoa. He was that Raleigh thing, that conference that happened. That was a thing he was doing. I was there for days. He's going, how is that possible? And, and so yeah, so that's what is happening to us over and over again. Where people are, people are the, once they get they, they look at it first and they say it can't be real, and then you know like people that are you know yeah. If hopefully the media show up to this thing and they'll yeah. be like no it is real. Yeah. That, that happened in Auckland when we were at the New Zealand conference. Right. They were they were there looking around the audience going yeah. This is a thing. This isn't just some weird oh, little fringe. Just something to put together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, yeah. And if we're having conferences in, in remote places, I'll tell you another quick story. Uh, and yeah, before you get time, I mean, oh, yeah. when, whenever it started. Um, when I was flying down to New Zealand, um, there was a guy passing around bread, you know, because it was a big plane. That's what you do is pass around bread. Oh, I think on the plane they were. Yeah. It, oh, well, okay. it was business class. Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah. so we were passing around bread. The guy's going, "Hey, do you want any bread?" And I don't want any bread. He goes, "No, do you want any bread?" And I go. Sure, I'll take some of those right there, those garlic things. And he goes, yeah, he, he's digging them with tongs, right? He goes, you want them because they're flat and they're round. And he winks at me and he goes, I'm going to pass up a red And he walks down, walks down the aisle and going, I'm looking back, I'm going, really, dude? And he's going, yeah. And he, got, and he had seen the documentary and he was, and, and when we got to our hotel, uh, this blonde kid, I remember, this is New Zealand, right? This is Auckland, just some hotel in the middle of Auckland. And he, this kid looks at me and he goes, I know you from somewhere. And I go, where? And he goes, Netflix. And I go, yeah. And he goes, I've seen your thing. He goes, I'm not exactly on board with it, but I respect the fact that you're, you know, that you're, you're, you're sticking to your guns. 
And then uh, coming back from, from the conference, where I was just in a random airport bar in Los Angeles, because we were connecting through Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and a young couple came up to me and said, he said, oh, I love your stuff, can we get a selfie with you? And I said, oh, here we go. That's where, and even uh, last but not least, again, we're everywhere, yeah, we're which is like the coffee guy that, that I, we, I was here yesterday at the venue and there was a coffee guy bringing coffee and he goes, he goes, uh, what do you do? He goes, are you, are you going to help with the coffee? And I go, I go no, I'm a, I'm a speaker. He goes, really? He goes, what do you speak about? And I go, flat earth. He goes, oh, that's weird. He goes, my, my girlfriend is in that a lot. And, and he goes, and I, and, and um, Sarah says, the promoter of this, she goes, yeah, she goes, this is Mark Sargent. He goes, you're Mark Sargent because my father-in-law really likes your stuff. <laughs> and I hear this time and time again, and as much as I'd like to say it's an ego trip, uh, it's not because of the topic involved. It's, it's, topic. Yeah, it's like, yeah, fine, I'm, I'm, I'm popular in flat earth. You put yeah. that at the end of anything, it's like, okay, so it's easy to be humble. So the, the feedback that, you, that you're getting actually from the, like, the non-flat earthers is actually yeah, right? Because the thing is, I mean, you know, I mean, you've been hearing the things that have been happening in the flat community where they are just, they're slamming that documentary like crazy, and it's like, it's, I mean, from what you've been saying just now, on the record, that's like, it's actually different. I mean, people are actually... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not, do not, I, again, I knew the flat were going to hate it because, the, uh, I mean, Patricia Steer, who saw it with me, we were the first two to see it. Yeah, yeah. She watched it the first time, she goes, she was stunned by it, she goes, wow, she goes, I knew so many, you know, everybody in it. And then the second time she watched it, she goes, ah. She goes, she goes, I don't like it. Because she doesn't, nobody wants to see a scientist on screen saying flat earth is a mistake, or a psychologist saying flat earth is miseducated, or an astronaut comes up and says, yeah, flat earth isn't a thing. Uh, because you don't want to see dissension. Right? Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, you have to do that every once in a while because it makes the audience feel safe. Yep. Uh, otherwise, it turns into a flat earth propaganda film. Uh, the director has had, had to do Q&As many times. Right. The very first question, every single time, was they asked the director, they said, are you a flat earther? And he had to answer, no, I am not. And nobody made the making of the film is. Because if he answered yes, and that works out in our favor, because if he answered yes, the audience would change. And they would oh, be like, right, they'd be like, oh, okay, so it's a propaganda film. I know this because when I saw it in Toronto with Patricia in the audience, and we were invited, and he goes, I'll announce you afterward. Oh, it's a terrible idea. And you do not want to tell the audience that we're in here. And he goes, oh, I'll be fine. And I'm like, well, and we were in the middle, nobody knew who we were, and then they announced it with a microphone. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, Mark and Patricia are sitting right there. And the audience just turned immediately, just swiveled on us. Was it, I was like, whoa, 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 all right. We don't want to talk to you guys anymore. We want to talk to them. Get them a microphone, <laughs> oh, yeah. seriously. And we, and literally, they had to, they couldn't even, they, the people up on the stage, the director, the producer, and the editor, they didn't even, weren't even there anymore. Oh, it, it was like they, they were, they, in fact, they, the crowd that surrounded us at that point wouldn't stop asking questions. They eventually had to kick us out of the theater and then had to kick us out of the lobby because it just never ends. That's the thing, which is flat earth raises a thousand questions, uh, you know, which always start with what about this or how does this work? Yes, yes. So, yeah, no, no, I mean, the flat earth community, I know, they're, they're, and they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be happy about it. But you, I, I have to look at the bigger picture, which is yes, exactly. this generates, has generated so much media Oh, you know, so many people are now talking about it that we're going to re recruit from it. Yes, so. absolutely. I'm really glad that I mean that you have mentioned that because the thing is, yeah, like I mean, it's going to spark questions. So, okay, so three, two minutes ago, five minutes. Eight. Oh, eight, eight minutes. Okay, so I guess yeah, because we're only we've only got eight minutes on my for my time for the. Oh, okay, time. okay. Um, just yeah. to, just to kind of wrap it up really quickly. So I guess we're just going to mention about the. Have you heard about the the the, the Shel uh, Shelley's doing the documentary? Um, the Plain Truth, have you, have you heard that she's been... No, actually, she and I have not talked since LA. Oh, okay, because, um, so. yeah, so she's actually been, we're actually in, in the, we're in the process of now starting production on a documentary called The Plain Truth, which will be like an inside version of, of a documentary that explains Flat Earth from Flat Earthers, for Flat Earthers. Nice. And it's like, we are, yeah, we're in, we're in Denver, Colorado to do that right now, and then we're going to continue, but... Uh, yeah, so it's good. awesome. That is real. I'm so happy for you guys. Yeah, so. I mean, it is. There's a lot of produ productions that are swirling around right now, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Remember, we've only been doing this for four years. Yes. And now we've gotten to ooh, feedback. Anyway, so, so just to, just to wrap it up, I want to say thank you, 
Okay. All right, for taking the time to do oh, this. Oh, happy I've, to. I've been really honored to have a. Oh no 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 no. no. I'm, and, I'm, um, I'm happy to do it. And we're really glad that you mentioned about the, uh, the, the the documentary that you're in because that just to clear things up and you know just to set everything straight is like. Yeah. So. Again, it is it is not going to be. Uh, you know, the, 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 everyone wants a victory movie. They, they want us to like. We will, everyone wants the score to be a hundred nothing. It's like no no no. Your best stories are close ones. Yes. You know, if there's peaks and valleys, and, and every great journey has their adversity. Yes, absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a true honor. So, anyway, you've heard it at theflatoflive.com, the ferret, and I uh, just want to say thank you to Mark Sargent for taking the time to interview. So, thank you, Mark. Very well. I appreciate it. So.